Hello again, it's me, Sean, and yes, welcome to another episode of... Shut up. Hello, it's me again, Sean, and for this video, we will be reviewing line integrals of scalar fields and some applications. And before anything else, I'd like to remind you na sa kahit sa ang bahagi ng video na ito ay pwede kayo mag-pause for a while if ever you want to solve the problem first before I fully answer the problem and you can also that pause feature para if ever may hindi kayo magets or kung gusto niyo ng breather for a while use that para <laughs> makahinga tayo kahit sandali <laughs> for the first problem we are asked to evaluate the line integral yz cosine x ds over c where the vector r is given by t 3 cosine t 3 sine t, where t ranges from 0 to pi. A good recall for solving this problem is that from Math 22, we have known that the norm of r prime is equal to ds over dt. And equivalently, it is just ds is equal to the norm of r prime dt. Now we proceed by computing the norm of r prime. Okay. Note that r prime is given by 1 negative 3 sine t 3 cosine t so that its norm is equal to the square root of the quantity 1 plus 9 sine squared t plus 9 cosine squared t which is just equal to the square root of the quantity 1 plus 9 times the quantity sine squared t plus cosine squared t. And we know that for any t, sine squared t plus cosine squared t is just equal to 1. Okay? So this expression here is just equal to square root of 10. So evaluating the given line integral, this is just equal to the integral of 3 cosine t times 3 sine t times cosine t times square root of 10 dt evaluated from 0 to pi, which is just equal to 9 square root of 10 times the integral of sine t cosine squared t dt evaluated from 0 to pi. And evaluating this further, we have this expression. From here, we used u substitution, right? Okay. And this is equal to negative 9 square root of 10 times the quantity negative 1 third minus 1 third. And simplifying further, this is equal to 6 square root of 10. For the next item, we are asked to evaluate the line integral 4y squared dx plus 3x dy plus 2z dz over c, where c is the union of c1 and c2, with c1 being the line segment from the origin to the point 4, negative 1, 2, and c2 being the line segment from the point 4, negative 1, 2, to the point 1, 0, negative 1. So with this problem, the first thing I consider is to get parametrizations for C1 and C2. So a parametrization of C1, which we call R sub 1, would be 0 plus 4 minus 0 times t, 0 plus negative 1 minus 0 times t, 0 plus 2 minus 0 times t. So what technique are we employing here? We're actually using the terminal points and the initial points of the line segments. Okay? So simplifying this, we have the vector 4t, negative t, 2t. And take note that whenever we're employing this technique, t will be ranging from 0 to 1. Okay? Now, a parametrization for C2 given by R sub 2 
would be of this form in which we apply the same technique. And simplifying this, we have 4 minus 3t, negative 1 plus t, 2 minus 3t, and again, t must be from 0 to 1. Now, given these parametrizations, we have r sub 1 prime being equal to 4, negative 1, 2, and that r sub 2 prime being equal to negative 3, 1, negative 3. Note that both c1 and c2 are smooth curves, so that we can express the given line integral as a sum of two line integrals. And now, each line integral will be evaluated over the two different curves, namely c1 and c2. So we have this expression here. Now, we proceed by evaluating the line integrals per curve. So along c1, we have the given line integral being equal to the integral of 4 negative t squared times 4 dt plus 3 times 4t times negative 1 dt plus 2 times 2t times 2 dt evaluated from 0 to 1. And simplifying this, we have this expression. And further, we have now the integral of 16t squared minus 4t dt evaluated from 0 to 1. And hence solving, we have this, which is just equal to 10 thirds. Now, along the c2, so the given line integral evaluated over c2 is equal to the integral of 4 times the square of negative 1 plus t times negative 3 dt plus 3 times 4 minus 3t times 1 dt plus 2 times 2 minus 3t times negative 3 dt evaluated from 0 to 1, which is just equal to this integral, which is also equal to the integral of negative 12t squared plus 33t minus 12 dt evaluated from 0 to 1 which is just equal to 1 half. Now, this means that the given line integral is equal to 10 thirds plus 1 half, which is just equal to 23 over 6. For the third problem, we are asked to evaluate the line integral yz dx minus xz dy plus xy dz over c where c is the curve parametrized by vector r given by e raised to t, e raised to 3t, e raised to negative t, where t is greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 1. To solve, we first let l to be the line integral of y z dx minus x z dy plus x y d z over c because this will help us for the notation. <laughs> so for simplicity's sake, we call the line integral L. And note that dx is expressible as dx over dt times dt, which is just equal to x prime of t dt. And the same technique applies for dy and dz, okay? Now, we proceed by computing r prime of t. And this gives us the vector e raised to t, 3 times e raised to 3t, negative e raised to negative t. Thus, the line integral L is equal to the integral of e raised to 3t times e raised to negative t times e raised to t dt minus e raised to t times e raised to negative t times 3 e raised to 3 t dt plus e raised to t times e raised to 3 t 
times negative e raised to negative t dt evaluated from 0 to 1. And simplifying further, this is just equal to the integral of negative e raised to 3t dt evaluated from 0 to 1. And hence, we have L being equal to negative E cubed plus 1 all over 3. Okay? For the application's part, in the first problem, we are asked to set up, not evaluate, <laughs> the definite integral equal to the area of the surface extending upward from the ellipse given by 9x squared plus 4y squared equals 36 in the xy plane to the parabolic cylinder given by z equals 4 minus x squared. So the portion of the surface actually forms a curtain wherein c or the base is the projection of the ellipse onto the xy plane. Okay? Actually the projection of 9x squared plus 4y squared equals 36. And whose height at any point is given by z equals 4 minus x squared. Try to visualize this and at some point you will find a curtain. Okay? And now, what can we see with the lateral of the curtain? So, it is actually perpendicular to the xy plane, right? And this contains c. But note that for c, we can rewrite it as x squared over 4 plus y squared over 9 equals 1. Then, c can be parametrized as the vector r given by 2 cosine t, 3 sine t. And for convenience, we do trace c counterclockwise so that our t will be ranging from 0 to 2 pi. Okay? Also, as we get r prime, we will be having the vector negative 2 sine t, 3 cosine t, and its norm being equal to the square root of the quantity, the square of negative 2 sine t plus the square of 3 cosine t, and it's equal to the square root of the quantity 4 sine squared t plus 9 cosine squared t. Then, the area of this curtain is equal to the definite integral given by the integral of 4 minus the square of 2 cosine t times the norm of r prime dt evaluated from 0 to 2 pi. And substituting the values that we got, we have this expression. And further simplifying, the definite integral that we're looking for is the integral of 4 sine squared t times the square root of the quantity 4 sine squared t plus 9 cosine squared t dt evaluated from 0 to 2 pi. For the last item, we are asked to find the mass of a thin wire shaped in the form of the curve parametrized by vector r given by 2 cosine t, 2 sine t, t where t is greater than or equal to 0, but less than or equal to 2 pi, if the density function of the wire is given by delta, which is equal to e raised to negative z all over x squared plus y squared. So to solve, we first let c be the curve parametrized by the vector r. Then the mass of this wire is simply the line integral of the density function along c, then we get r prime, which is now equal to negative 2 sine t, 2 cosine t, 1, so that its norm would be equal to the square root of the quantity 4 sine squared t plus 4 cosine squared t plus 1, which is just equal to the square root of 4 plus 1 since we can rewrite this expression as 4 times sine squared t 
plus cosine squared t then this will be equal to 1 right so that 4 times 1 is equal to 4 and this is equal to square root of 5 now this means that the mass of the thin wire is given by the integral of e raised to negative t all over the square of 2 cosine t plus the square of 2 sine t times square root of 5 dt evaluated from 0 to 2 pi. And further simplifying, we have the mass of the thin wire being equal to the square root of 5 over 4 times the quantity negative e raised to negative 2 pi plus 1. Okay? That would be all. Till the next video. Thank you.